In the name of the, of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what can we say that Abraham found our ancestor according to the flesh? Indeed, if Abraham was justified on the basis of his works, he has reason to boast. But this was not so in the eyes of God. For what does scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. A worker's wage is credited not as a gift, but as something due. But when, does, when one does not work, yet believes in the one who justifies the ungodly, his faith is credited as righteousness. So also David declares the blessedness of the person to whom God credits righteousness apart from works. Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven, and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not record. The word of the Lord. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. I turn to you, O Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Blessed is he whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered. Blessed the man to whom the Lord imputes not guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, my guilt I covered not. I said, I confess my faults to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you just. Exalt all you upright of heart. I turn to you, O Lord, in time of trouble. And you come. Alleluia, alleluia. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us. You have put our hope in you. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, so many people were crowding together that they were trampling one another underfoot. Jesus began to speak first to his disciples. Beware of the leaven that is, the hypocrisy of the Pharisees. There is nothing concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. Therefore, whatever you have said in the darkness will be heard in the light, 
and what you have whispered behind closed doors will be proclaimed on the housetops. I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but after that can do no more. I shall show you, I shall show you whom to fear. Be afraid of the one who, after killing, has the power to cast into Gehenna. Yes, I tell you, be afraid of that one. Are not five sparrows sold for two small coins? Yet not one of them has escaped the notice of God. Even the hairs of your head have all been counted. Do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. The Gospel of the Lord. Beautiful gospel today, in a way, kind of a roller coaster, and entering into a lot of um, a lot of warning, but also loads of consolation. There's so much just being unpacked for us, reminders for us, and also teaching in our relationship with God. First, this w- warning that God that Jesus gives against hypocrisy, which is that word, of course, that means being two-faced, saying one thing, doing another being one way among some people, but then behind closed doors, someone entirely different. And Jesus gives these words in a way against hypocrisy. And, and, and there's more, I want to lean into that. There's more than just speaking against hypocrisy here, but there's nothing concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. Whatever is said in the darkness will be heard in the light. Whatever you hear whispered behind closed doors will be proclaimed on the housetops. It's, in a way, Jesus here is proclaiming that God sees everything. <laughs> and so there, he's, he's speaking into, I'm not talking to us here, but the temptation of the world to lean into that, that one ring principle, the Lord of the Rings, where, of course, the person who, who wears the ring is suddenly... Um, suddenly invisible. There's that invitation that now they can do anything because no one sees what they're doing. In the, and we see that in the world. It's active at times. The, when someone is hidden or when they feel like they are hidden, there's greater freedom to do whatever they want because they're not going to get caught. We see it also in the world today. You know, that a uh, uh, trouble, like it, it, it's not wrong if I don't get caught. You know, it's very, very low level morality, actually no morality. But, G, but God here is saying, no, I, I see all things. It's an invitation of, of light in every situation. It might strike us, it might fill us with a kind of fear, like he sees all things. <laughs> But of course, there, there's more, and it's an, it's an invitation for us. Yes, he sees everything, everything that goes on in our hearts, every little thought, every little, um, every anger, every, every sin, every, every, he sees all things. But of course, there, there's more for us as Christians, that there's more taking place. All of our little sufferings, all of our little sacrifices, all of them which are offered gently and quietly. He sees all of them. He also looks at all of our, this is really important for us to see, at all of our weaknesses and also our sins. And of course, there is whispered so gently his mercies, which others, which the world may not see, may be blind to the the gentle mercy that he wants to give to us. And all of that is seen, and in a way, deeply celebrated in heaven now. He's, he's, all of that is celebrated. And so it, it's an invitation to, to lean into that glory that we've been given. That's the, the tie-in with this last thing, with the, this last deeply consoling words. Um, Are not five sparrows sold for two coins? Yet not one of them has escaped the notice of God. Even the hairs of your head have all been counted. 
For me, of course, that's becoming less and less consoling. <laughs> but but he, he's but the, but he, he sees our the hairs on our head. How much more every suffering, how much more every place where we are in need of him, he sees all of it. And in a, in a way, he, him telling us to, that he sees it. We're invited to see him seeing it, to, to enter into deeper relationship with him there, to receive this great intimacy. For us as Christians, yes, God sees everything in us, but that is not meant to be fill, fill us with fear. We are not meant to be afraid of God, not in that servile fear, but we, we are open before him. And so he takes care of all things. So we're leaning into that, to that mercy today. Let's stand together and offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all bishops and priests, may the promptings of the Holy Spirit be their guide as they shepherd and lead the faithful. We pray to the Lord. For all nations and peoples of the world, may human pride and worldly idols fall before the presence and majesty of God. We pray to the Lord. For all lives, for all whose lives are afflicted with war or violence, remember especially those in, in Israel and Gaza, may they find healing through the gentle assistance of others and through the power of God's healing love, we pray to the Lord. For our faith community, may we, may we be strengthened in our desire to love and serve in ways that bring others to Christ, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all of those who are married in a special way today, Meg and Lou Larson, who are celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary, we pray to the Lord. And for the souls of all the faithful departed, especially for Hans Zimmermann, for whom this Mass is being offered, may they, through the mercy of God, come to rest in his eternal light and peace. We pray to the Lord. God, our Father, we offer you our prayers and petitions with thanksgiving and trust through your Son, who is Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks 
to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you have made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen.
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feel, as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So as I um, mentioned earlier, uh, Meg and Lou are celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary, so we're going to have a special blessing for them. First, just a quick announcement, just to remind everyone that we have our Friday hospitality after Mass today, and everyone is welcome to come for coffee and treats. So we have a special blessing here, and all are welcome to raise your hand in blessing over Meg and Lou. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Lord God and Creator, we bless and praise your name. In the beginning, you made man and woman so that they might enter a communion of life and love. You likewise blessed the union of Meg and Lou so that they might reflect the union of Christ with his church. Look with kindness on them today. Amid the joys and struggles of their life, you have preserved the union between them. Renew their marriage covenant. Increase your love in them and strengthen their bond of peace so that surrounded by their children, they may always rejoice in the gift of your blessing. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.